Hi everybody, welcome to today's webinar where we're going to discuss with you with Allsop and Allsop what is going on in today's property market. We're going to discuss what's going on in the population, how the pricing indicators are and where we see that going, who's currently buying and renting properties based on age and nationality and all relevant information that will make you make an informed decision on your real estate questions and needs. So we're going to go for a few slides. I'm just going to move my uh, picture to the bottom left-hand corner so you can see more of the important stuff and a little bit lesser for me. Um, so this is a real estate review uh, of the Dubai property market. So who are the people that are investing in Dubai and why are they investing here? First of all, the whys. The high return on investment are currently receiving between 6 to 10% yields depending on where you're currently investing your money. You can drastically increase your return on investment on money on money by taking part in post payment plan handovers where you could potentially pay 10 to 20% down, receive the keys and start receiving rent immediately where some investors are receiving 50, 60, 70% yield on their money put down, uh, which is incredible. So we also have the Dubai as a, a global hub. Uh, as people know, it's seven hours to get to the UK. Uh, it's a de destination for many places, whether that's Thailand. It's, I think it's currently the most visited airport in the world again uh, in 2022. So this is a destination location, which makes it an incredible global hub and why many big companies are basing their, their bases here. It's also a tourist destination as Dubai has moved across uh, the years. We've seen it gone from a, a, a city of sand, uh, where millionaires were made overnight to now one of the, you know, the, the places that the go-to cities people book, whether that is the Burj Khalifa, the Dubai Marina, the Palm Jumeirah, the beaches, the restaurants, the hotels. Dubai is now one of the leading cities in the world for tourism and is one of the forefronts of people's mind when they look at booking a holiday. Innovation and leadership, we've seen so much change over the years, uh, specifically uh, things like the laws that have been uh, changed over the years, such as cohabitation this year, where it's now legal for uh, two unmarried people to live together. We've seen business laws change where you no longer need a business sponsor on your books uh, and many other innovations that are pushing Dubai to the forefront of uh, a modern uh, city. And obviously the continued growth, which is a major part for any investor. So that's growth of population, growth of value of assets living in Dubai, uh, growth of businesses, growth of business opening, growth of restaurants opening. Uh, Dubai, as we know, is a, a growing city that I've seen in the 16 years that I've been here. So let's discuss why and the undersupply. Now, this is a big factor a lot of people uh, want to talk about and maybe don't want to talk about, but I believe Dubai is undersupplied and will be undersupplied for for many years and this could go on a world scale where if you look at the population of the world in 1990 i think the population was 5.5 billion approximately today it's 7.3 7.4 billion people that's on a larger scale on a singular scale obviously there's more people entering the world um <clears throat> but there's also a lot of people entering dubai dubai is now becoming the forefront for a lot of people looking to make uh, dubai their home a lot of people come here for a year and then ended up turning into a, a one, two, three, 10, 15 year later journey. Like myself, I come here for two years and I came here in 2006. And you can see the pictures of JBR when they, when, they, uh, when they were handed over. And when they handed over, I remember people saying to me, Lewis, who's going to live in these buildings? You know, there's too many of them. And I've seen that happen over the years with Damak Hills and JBR and Jumeirah Golf Estates and Victory Heights. And there's always a question of who's going to live there. But... Dubai is deemed healthy by the population, in my opinion. If the population continues to grow, uh, then Dubai will continue to, to thrive. So I think Dubai from 2006, when I joined 2022, you can see it's gone from 1.4 million to over doubling to 3.483 million. And they are local government statistics taking out people that have left the country. And you can also see there's only been at the bottom 100,000 people moved to the country. Sorry, 100,000 new properties entered versus, um, you know, nearly 1.5 million people moving in a, 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 a few years span. So um, there is a major, major gap between people moving to Dubai versus property handing over. So this is why we see the undersupply happening. Now, obviously, there is that natural question being asked, who is buying, who's renting? But the reality is whether they're renting it's good for the landlords uh, and, the, and the investors. And if they're buying, it's good for the homeowners. So 
people need somewhere to live so the population continues to grow we're going to see more people come now if you look at major cities around the world this gives you an idea for how small dubai is compared to some of the major cities you know we're at 2.91 million uh, as of i think that's the start of 2021 now currently sitting at uh, 3.4 like discussed before london's just under 10 and new york at uh, 18 million Munich 1.53 and 12 million for Paris. Now it shows that Dubai is still a small city, but if you look at the numbers a few years ago, our growth trajectory has been a lot larger in growth than most cities in the world. And I think Sheikh Mohammed's got a, a model by 2040. I think we'll see nearly 6 million people live in the city. So it's going to be a very, very interesting period for the next 18, 20 years to watch that vision. Uh, take place and what Dubai will look like. Um, but that gives you an idea for wh where Dubai sits in the, in the global cities. Now we've put some comparables together for what's actually selling in Dubai versus what's selling in a major city like London. I want to make this clear. I'm probably going to make my screen a little bit bigger here so you can just zoom in on, on what I'm saying. Dubai in 2008, 9, 10 was not classed as a major city. And that was a, an understandable point from a lot of investors and a lot of uh, people we spoke to to say, you can't compare London to Dubai, you can't compare to New York to Dubai. I think now we can. I think Dubai is now on the spotlight for everything that a major city has, whether that's financial hubs, whether that's restaurants, nightlife, uh, shopping, population, it has it all. It has everything. So look at these two options that I put on the plate, uh, on the box here. So off plan, nearly handed over the Royal Atlantic resident at 4,000 dirham per square foot, which when that was launched, people said, wow, that's very expensive for what Dubai is. Versus Berkeley Group's Chelsea Kings Road, 8,525 uh, dirhams per square foot. And that's handing over in about three years. Now that does come with cinemas, uh, pools, and this is the super luxury end of Chelsea. Um, so it's a real high end development, but it gives you a real understanding for the peak of off plan in Dubai versus the peak off plan in uh, London. We can see that Dubai is still half price compared to London. And that's why a lot of people are interested in Dubai. You then also got the Burj Khalifa, which is a ready property. Now the last transaction we did was 2,300 dirhams per square foot and a standard apartment in Earl's Court. So this is just a standard apartment again, nearly 2,000 pounds per square foot versus 500 pounds or 2,300 dirhams versus 8,383. I still see the Burj Khalifa as severely undervalued. And I think it's a key asset that a lot of people have got their eyes on for value for money with it attached to the Armani Hotel, the Dubai Mall. It's an incredible asset. So <clears throat> the reason we want to show that is we want to show you how cheap Dubai actually is. And you can see that compared to London, which is another major city, people in London come to Dubai to buy and they go, wow, we can get a lot more for their money. We head on to the next page. Now this talks about Dubai as a whole. So you've got a nice picture there of, uh, of the uh, Jumeirah Islands and Marina and JLT. And one of the things that we want to get across to anybody listening to this market is you can no longer talk about Dubai as a whole. It has sub markets within it, a bit like England when you have central London and then you can go to where I'm from in Coventry, which is a completely different market because a different type of clientele different type of people that live there, but it's all under the same uh, country. Um, and this is where we are with Dubai at the moment. Yes, Dubai is a city, but it has micro cities within it. So it's very difficult to say what prices Jumeirah Islands and the growth Jumeirah Islands has had versus how you class what's gone on the Burj Khalifa. So we're advising anyone that's interested in the property market to have a look at the sub climates and the micro markets that you're working in rather than saying Dubai has gone up 20% because We've seen some developments that have showed minor gains. Areas like Sports City, uh, which has limited infrastructure but great value for money, has seen not as much of a growth compared to somewhere like uh, a super luxury development on the Palm Jumeirah, which has seen 40, 50, 60% growth. So you've really got to consider what you're buying and then also look at that market as a pricing rather than classing Dubai as a city as a whole. And that's what we're advising every investor to do. Now this gives you an idea for when we're talking about how do you compare um, assets. Let me just make this a bit smaller now so we can uh, get a, a bit more information on the screen. Um, when we talk about comparable areas, really, we want to look at Dubai communities. So <clears throat> if you look at how you compare the areas and you're looking for, how do I say Dubai is not a city anymore? 
and how is it we compare? If you look at the Palm Jumeirah, which is on here, leads by Marina and the Greens and downtown and even Damak Hills Apartments, they're comparable because they are apartments with a certain location. But then you've got uh, further, the further out value you go, you can see you've got the Arabian Ranches, Town Square, Mira, and the Villa Project. Now, what the general transition is, is the people that first moved to Dubai, they moved to the busier areas like Marina and the Palm Jumeirah, and they're paying a higher price per square foot. But as they get a little bit more mature into Dubai, whether that is the family, kids, dogs, um, what happens is they want more value for the money and want more space for their family. So they decide to move further out and get more value for money. And that's when the area like Arabian Ranches and Town Square and Mirror come into, um, into place. So that's a real understanding for when you're looking at the transition of a, a, a someone living in Dubai, how do you compare the areas? So now we're going to go through that so to give you an idea for the, the variation of difference. So if you look at the page we just discussed, then you can see you've got the Springs and you've got Town Square. So the Springs is quite a central location. It's around here, if I'm not mistaken, off the top of my head. And then you've got Mira and Town Square, which is just down here. So a little bit further out in town. You can see here, you can buy a Springs unit for 2.9 million. Now this was a few months ago. This probably gone up at this point from uh, March, 2022 at 2,258 square feet. You could buy the same square footage unit for 1.175. So 816 dirhams a square foot for a town square versus 1,284. So if we just go back to the map we were looking at a minute ago, the Springs is here. And the further you come down the location here, the lower price per square foot that you're looking to get because it's less centralized in location, the further drive for people. Now we've seen that across the board in a few other locations as well. So we have Damak Kills versus Dubai Marina. At Damak, the Dubai Marina apartment in central Dubai Marina with full marina views. You're talking 1,480 square feet. Uh, and that is at 1,420 dirham per square foot, 1,418. Versus Damak Hills, which is a full golf course view, as you can see here, for 1.3 million. Same square footage, but nearly half the price, just under half the price of the value. And again, going back to the map we looked at a minute ago, you can see this again is uh, Dubai Marina. And as you come further down here, Damak Hills. So there is a, 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 de a decrease in value per square foot the further you get out towards... Um, the further driven away uh, locations. So who's buying these properties? Uh, as you can see, 60% of people that are buying from Allsop and Allsop are 30 to 45 year olds, uh, 31 to 45 year olds, 46 and above are 30%. Only 8% are under 30 years old, which is uh, an incredible statistic really. And the purpose of purchase, which really excites me is that over 75% of people purchasing on the right hand side here, are people that are um, looking to uh, be involved in the cycle of Dubai. What I mean by the cycle is they're no longer coming in and flipping and moving. They're buying a house, they're living in it, they're selling, and they're buying a bigger or smaller place based on their needs and requirements. So only 25% of people that are buying for Allsop and Allsop are for investment, which shows that there is a healthy cycle of people circulating their money within the Dubai property market based on their life and what's going on with it. So that's very, very good news to keep a stable market. By trends who are buying in 2020 versus 2021, uh, British, Indian, and French were um, our top uh, three nationalities. Um, and in, in 2020, 2021, we had British, French, uh, British, Indian, French, and Canadian. And it's a, um, very, very interesting that 13 people are viewing uh, per uh, purchase. What that means for you is that someone that's registering on our system to buy a house, they are viewing 13 properties before they are making a decision on what they want to buy. Um, and that's the same thing with communities. They're viewing two communities. So if they're looking in the Springs, they might be looking in the Mira or the Arabian Ranches for comparable areas. And we as a company have seen a 28% increase from 2020 to 2021. Uh, so we've seen a major increase over that period and even more over the last six months or so. And the people that are selling, to give you an idea, so a lot of people are selling their investment, 47% of people are selling their investment. And 31% of people are upsizing, which is what naturally happens in a market that's increasing in, in their asset value. And only 13% leaving Dubai, which is natural. Uh, those people leaving Dubai for whatever reason that may be. 9% downsizing. And again, that's an anomaly that you'll find that in a, in a market that's going up. Generally, uh, people are looking to uh, increase their property size. 
So what's next for Dubai? Um, and this is how we'll leave the forecast for you. How do I see Dubai going as the uh, CEO of Allsop and Allsop? Dubai, um, there will be a limited supply of handovers compared to the amount of people moving here. And the reason that's naturally going to happen, there was a stimulant put in place from the government about three years ago where they really slowed down the launches to make sure there wasn't an oversupply of properties. Since that's happened, we have obviously naturally have to build these properties again and they have to hand over. So there's going to be, based on the new amount of people coming to Dubai versus handovers, there's going to be a limited supply of properties coming to to the book. So I, I see the, 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 the increase in interest in owning a home versus not enough properties on the books, uh, increasing the price value. And again, if I ask anybody today that's looking for a house, find the house that you want to live in. Let's say that's a Springs 4M. Now, what we need to do when you're looking for the house, try and find one that's vacant on transfer that you actually like the location of, that's in a good good, um, good situation where you're happy to move into it. That dwindles down from 10 to about two uh, because most properties are vacant on transfer unless they're owner-occupied. I think there's going to be more government stimulations on the way, whether that would be increasing loan to values, potentially uh, other ways to stimulate first time buyers into the market and anything to do with owning businesses and making it easier to, to operate. I've seen yesterday in the Dubai news, they announced that uh, they're now creating a savings plan, like a pension for anyone who is an expatriate in Dubai. And I also see there's been more secondary property purchase, people looking to buy another investment for themselves. So Dubai is in a very, very healthy play place as of March 2022. And if anyone wants any more information, please feel free to inbox us at Northstar or message me directly. Um, and we can uh, definitely assist in any real estate needs that you have. And that would bring an end to my presentation. So thank you very much. Thank you for listening. And we'll try and get some more market news out to you soon. Thank you. Bye.